everyone, I'm Linda Nickel, and welcome to the Happiness Hour. Every week, we meet here to connect, inspire, and create with the help of a guest speaker that shares their images, stories of inspiration, and helpful tips and techniques to help you improve your photography skills. The schedule for our upcoming presentations is on my website at lindanickel.com. Under Happiness Hour, you'll find the links to previous sessions on my YouTube channel. Tonight's guest is Chris Fitch. Chris is a Texas-based landscape photographer who photographs bright and shiny urban scenes, dark skies filled with stars, abandoned and forgotten farmhouses along back roads, and a little bit of everything in between. In tonight's presentation, and now for something completely different, Chris is going to talk about creative ruts, why they happen, and exploring practical ways you can get out of the box and expand your photographic vision. If you're on Instagram, you can find Chris at cfitchphoto and on his website at cfitchphoto.com. Welcome back to the Happiness Hour, Chris. Glad to be here. Thank you for having me. So I introduced you um, as a landscape photographer, and I don't know if that's really accurate because you kind of like me, we shoot a little bit of everything. Um, how, do, how do you categorize yourself? I'm 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 nature and 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 uh, landscape. I'm not exactly sure when landscape stops and nature starts sometimes, but I uh, I, I do shoot a little bit of everything. But that's kind of what the, the, the discussion tonight is going to be about: is uh, going after other things outside of the box, so that you don't kind of get in a cubby hole and get in a rut as much. So, uh, but I'm I'm primarily landscape. That's where I'm at my happiest. I think you know I've actually. I'm just going to say it's been a privilege to get to shoot alongside you. And, and the things that we've been shooting have been landscape. We've done, we, we were in Dallas when once upon a time and did some urban scenes, but it really, it was fun, but it wasn't as fun as being out, I don't know, on dirt. So for me, I, I'm categorizing you in landscape and I'm comfortable with you in that box. So, all right. Good, good. Well, <laughs> and I was, I was social distancing before social distancing was... <laughs> popular 20 <laughs> miles between me and the next person so so you're in your happy place during covid all right so That's i'm right. going to give you control if i'm i kind of just glossed over an intro is there something that you want to add to maybe your introduction or maybe tell us a little bit about yourself i know you so it's a little unfair when i bring on people i know because i know you so i just assume everybody else knows you it's harder for me to do an introduction so well, so I, I think that probably the easiest way to, to, to I guess give a, some uh, perspective of, of where I, how I got here uh, to, where, to where we are today is that uh, I started shooting uh, in the film era before digital was ever really uh, realistic. So I've had to make an interesting challenge. It was about a 10 or 15 year gap between when I stopped shooting film uh, and started shooting digital. But it, it's interesting to, to, uh, to, to, to make that transition. And it's, it's all the same and it's also very different. But it's, it's something I've done uh, many, many years ago. I worked at a, I, I managed a, a professional camera store. And so I would take out every piece of equipment that we had and go out and shoot it until, so I could make sure I, everyone, everyone knew they could come to me for answers. So I, I did get kind of a, a varied uh, set of, uh, experience from that. Okay. Well, um, we kind of were talking a little bit in the room before we, you know, started recording. Um, I'm willing to admit that I'm a, in a little bit of a rut because I just I can't get motivated. Summers are not, there's <clears throat> nothing interesting for me to shoot in the summer. One, it's just too darn hot. And, you know, mm -hmm. being hot comes whining comes nobody wants to hang out with me so I'm curious to see what kind of stuff you're going to show us tonight so with that I'll let you get started okay great and, and you know actually uh, so what we're going to talk about is, is something that I've 
been doing for a long time outside of photography. Uh, the nature of what I do for a living, which is basically in the space of, of uh, IT consulting related stuff, I'm a problem solver. And you can't take canned answers. You can't take canned anything and show up and have that work. So getting out of the, getting out and staying out of a comfort zone is, is where I, is where I live. Uh, I uh, professionally have been trained to, uh, there's a methodology that I won't explain, but basically it's, it's about, I'm a very analytical person. I have some creative streak in me, uh, but my analytical process is to be creative. So it's, it's, a, it's an interesting kind of a misnomer. But so what we're going to do is, to, to your point, uh, Linda, I started a while back doing what I call science, my science. And those science experiments were things like, I don't have anything I want to shoot. Um, I don't really know what I want to do. I have no inspiration. So, but I need to go shoot something. So what am I going to do? And I feel like my inner child, my inner kid is coming out because I remember going in, out in the backyard. I played baseball for 11 years. And I remember being in third or fourth or fifth grade and taking tennis balls and throwing them up on the, on the roof and having people come over. We played baseball in the backyard, but we made up our own games. Uh, it was something where we just um, were, we're just being. And so being able to go out, having the challenge and the fun of finding it's kind of like playing we're going to play basketball it's a basketball game but only hook shots are allowed those kind of Oops. work on things and, and you're creative not because you have to be but because just because it makes it fun especially if you pick something that the other guys can't do but so the, some of the things i'm going to talk about are things that uh they're, they're my twist on certain challenges. If I, I, I was a little surprised, I, I guess now I shouldn't be, but I was a little surprised to find out that there were, if I looked for photography challenges on, um, on the web, uh, there was about five to eight million pages that would populate. Uh, it was just unbelievable how uh, prolific that topic was and is. So I'm going to take my twist on it, and there's nothing here that I believe is um, is earth shattering or is shocking, but it's it's something about we're going to to say we get in the habit of doing certain things a certain way, and, and I, I think that have, I'm sure that all of us on this uh, on this call have been around enough that we've done things like driving to work and then stopping you know, not physically stopping, but think, but think, did I stop at that last stop sign? It gets to be so common and such rote about what we do that we do it almost mindlessly. And sometimes that's great. But sometimes if we're looking for something that is, that is a, um, uh, that requires preferably some creativity or some, some original thought, the original thought is the, is the opposite. It's the enemy of act of um, of something that's that's a, that's a process that that is uh, you know you, you don't want to you give people processes to follow so they don't have to be creative. You don't want people being creative outside of a process. So the, the process in and of itself can be a problem for us. But anyway, we'll we'll continue on with that, and I'm, I'm happy for y'all to. to to interrupt me or ask questions or put them in the chat. However, Linda wants to handle it. I uh, uh, I deliberately, Linda, cut my content down even more than what we talked about, just because I expected that uh, I, I didn't want to hurry to go through the content. So I'm just going to jump right in. Linda, any any questions or clarifications before I jump in? Not yet. And okay. I'll, I'll just remind people, if you want to go ahead and if you have any questions, stick them in the chat and I'll get those in front of Chris. <clears throat> Great. Thank you. So I'm just going to start with one that that uh, that I've done without realizing it was necessarily a challenge. I spent a lot of time, uh, looking at, photo, at photography books and going out and trying to figure out how do I want to shoot that? You know, where where did um, Ansel Adams take that? Well, I have no way to go where he was, but how did people take those pictures? Especially if they were somewhere I could go and and try to recreate it. 
uh, w this last year, um, almost a year ago, I uh, went to Oregon and there were certain places that we went, one, one place in particular where the conversation, they were holding a picture and they said, I've never shot this from here. I don't know how they did that. And so we all actively tried to figure out where did that person stand? How, where were they positioned? How exactly can we recreate this? And we did it really seriously. It wasn't like we were just doing it for grins. This became some sort of a, of a major uh, uh, push for us. But the idea of recreating iconic photography is really more about, you know, you're not necessarily being creative, but you, you have someone that's already given you a pass. And it may, be, and a lot of times those things are things that we would like to shoot. Maybe we don't shoot. Uh, and and it, so it, it would be um, an inspiring thing to just go out and try to come up with something like that. The purpose of these challenges is, is not necessarily to come back with a frameable shot. The purpose of these challenges, it's obviously we all want to shoot and come back with something. But the purpose of these challenges for me, I'm, I'm going to say this, like the purpose of it is if y'all are going to agree with me. But my purpose in doing these is to get better. My purpose is to take my skill sets and have um, where I can use them in a number of different areas. And uh, there's, there's all kinds of limitations that all of a sudden pop up on us when we're shooting. I mean, we forgot that lens. Uh, we forgot my tripod, I, my whatever it might be. We're all of a sudden, we, we have a storm coming and I've got three minutes to make this shot. All those kinds of things are, will help us both deal with the, me the mechanics of how we have to deal with that time constraint or the limitations that we have to face. But it also um, says that we have a, a, a way of going about doing it so that we don't spend all of our time getting stuck in the weeds. So looking at the, at the iconic photo, my first one here, this is one that we did create. This is the one I mentioned just a few minutes ago. It's at uh, Smith Rock in uh, Oregon. And it's, it just kind of comes up out of nowhere. It's, it's very flat, almost like desert. And all, there's this, these, these mountains that stick up out of nowhere. And there's, there's uh, like canyons and rivers and all sorts of things. And so we worked our way trying to figure, because this is not the place that normally people shoot Smith Rock. We worked our way over here and we, um, we found, you probably can't see it, but there's a little tree above that little outcropping in, on the, to the left. And that was our, that was one of our points of, uh, of, of navigation. So we just spent quite a bit of time working on this. And, and of course, it was raining on us almost the entire time. So we were determined to take a great shot in the rain. And we got an, an, an unexpected break in the clouds that lasted about a minute, uh, which is what you're seeing. Uh, but the rest of it, actually, the shot still looked good. So this is one of those that I sat out to just say, how can we, uh, how can we recreate that shot? There's a second one that I would um, that I, I, I really liked again on in Oregon. This is the sea stacks along the southern Oregon coast are they're just everywhere. And for somebody from Texas, I've, I've only seen pictures of these. I've ever actually gone out and did something with a sea stack. Uh, so this was a lot of fun for me. Uh, in this particular case. I, uh, I have a bad knee that I, I discovered has, has, was acting up about half of the way down the cliff to get this shot. So I, I got to a spot and I just sat down. And I basically was on my rear end turning about uh, 180 degrees to 240 degrees, but I didn't get up because I couldn't get up. And, uh, and so I was shooting from this one spot. This is a shot that I knew how I wanted to frame it. I knew what I wanted to do. And so I was recreating this shot and, and this is the shot I was trying to get. We'll talk about it in a, in a few minutes about what we do beyond that. But this is just the inspiration I, I would offer is for you to, to go see something that it doesn't have to be iconic. It doesn't have to be uh, Ansel Adams. It can be just something that someone else did and say, I'm gonna see if I can duplicate it. Uh, so that's, that's my first suggestion. The next one is nine perspectives and um, is a very mechanical thing to do. Uh, this is something where when we walk up to a scene, the first thing uh, I tell people who I, I've done this a number of times where we just stopped and pulled over and we're going to go shoot a picture of, let's say, an old barn. And then I look at them and said, OK, what's the shot? And they I don't know. I said, well, 
to pick a shot. What is it we're going to shoot here? We can't thing. So we, I would walk through the idea of looking at a scene and picking something that catches my eye and making sure then that I shoot what, my, what caught my eye rather than spraying across everything and we'll get just kind of snapshotty looking pictures as opposed to I want to catch the light that's coming through the roof and is shining on the on the back wall and in on the shadows at the back side of this barn well that's the shot then and so now I have something that I can I can pay attention to and concentrate on and focus on as I go about trying to catch that shot there may be other shots that I see as I move around but there's more than one way to get that shot that I've just described. So what this really means very simply is like most people, we walk up and we're at eye level and we hold our camera up and we kind of look at it and kind of make, kind of figure out what we're going to do. And many times what we, what we see people doing and what, what we may do is we shoot an eye level shot and we move on. The idea here is that you take that eye level shot, you then shoot as high as you possibly can at the same scene you then get down really low to shoot exactly the same focal area, but you now are changing the perspective uh, drastically as to what you're going to come up with. Uh, so now you've shot high, medium, and low, and you do the same thing. You can either scoot over a foot, you can scoot over uh, 50 yards, whatever you want to do, but just do the same thing on to the left and to the right. And that gives us nine different perspectives. And I, it, it, this is difficult to illustrate, but I'm going to try. So I'm, I walked into this chapel. This is in um, in uh, Arkansas, the springs, or just hot springs. Uh, so I walked in. I had seen this 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 I was determined I was going to take this picture. So I walked in with my big tripod, and the camera was all the way up as far as it could go because I was going to start shooting high. So this is what I'm doing. You can see at perspective is I'm looking down pretty pretty far down at the, the, the pews that are in front of me. And so I shot to the left and to the right. Now, this is an example of, I, I didn't really have room to move my tripod over backwards and forwards, uh, but I shot to the left and I shot to the right to kind of catch the overall broad. This is a very narrow, it's a, it's a beautiful place, but it's a pretty small place and very narrow. Shot this because I wanted to make sure I could get all of this. Uh, because I was going to miss a lot if I just shot down the middle. The next thing I did, um, and this may not be a good way to represent it, but I wanted to show at eye level the same exact sh shot or, or framing, except that it's now at a lower level. And now it looks like, for example, in the top right corner, it looks like the roof is taller than it was before. Uh, and, and so it, it just gives you that perspective that the camera particularly uh, represents and that we can learn to, to re we can train ourselves or be, to be more sensitive at looking at those different perspectives and how it actually does change the shot. And the same thing uh, when now I'm down where uh, my camera is is at the at the seat level of the of the pews, and uh, and it's something where again it changes the it changes the shot. I was there I was 30 minutes. This place, as you might imagine. Uh, has a has a wedding about every 23 minutes. Uh, there's everybody in the world comes in that this is the, this is a great place for people to come. So to find a gap that you didn't have to fight over fight to get past people or they don't want you intruding in their their wedding, you didn't have a tremendous amount of time. So you can see that at the very front, there's a guy who gave up with me taking his spot at the back. So he's at the front shooting back at me. So that gives you some idea. So this is really simple, but it's something that if you say uh, I don't know that it's going to make any difference, but why not? Why not just have a mental picture of those of those nine positions? You make them up, ho however uh, exaggerated or, or minimal as they are, but just see what the difference is. And the, the important thing, I think, as we shoot, we tend to go quickly from camera to editing, and we may not look at the editing part critically. We may not look at it to see what went wrong with this picture. What is it I have to fix in editing that I could fix uh, in the camera before? So looking at this critically, I think, is, a, is an educational thing for us. Um, I thought this one was fun, and I had to figure out how I was going to – I didn't have time to go shoot something different. But the ugly location challenge, you show up, and either somebody took a great picture, and you get there, and you're going, you've got to be kidding me. This is terrible. 
how in the world did they get that picture out of this place? Uh, or something has happened. You know, the bunch of brush has grown up or, or something. Or you just pull over and that's the way it is. It's just nothing about this that looks attractive. It's not iconic. It's not a, a beautiful vista to say, okay, now I'm out. I'm out of the car. I'm going to, um, I'm going to get it to shot one way or the other. This is the kid in me again saying, I'm, I'm not giving back into the car until I've got X amount of shots that I, I think are okay. So here's one of the places that I love. This is a, an abandoned uh, drive-in movie. And this was the concession stand. And it's, uh, it's, um, it's just junk everywhere. And, and so I, this is actually brighter than what it was. It just looked like, it looks like it smelled like it looked very stale, very um, d disheveled and falling apart and all that kind of stuff. So I had to figure out how am I going to shoot this? By the way, the light coming in through the window is not the sun. The light coming in the window is from a massive neon billboard sign that's across the road out in the country that's shining in, into this thing, which makes it even more challenging. So the other, so, so this is the shot that I ended up with that isn't, magical it isn't something that, that i changed the scene drastically but i did sh have an interpretation of how i wanted to represent it how can i bring out those colors in that door how can i bring out the textures that are different all over the place in various uh steps of decay how do i bring out and, and this is me looking at the at the elements and trying to figure out what is it that makes this this interesting and so there are layers, for example, there's a little, uh, uh, I guess, a bar or something over to the right hand side that the face of that is picking up that kind of a bluish gray is picking up light that it doesn't just disappear all the way to the back wall. There's all sorts of stuff between here and there, and it, the light hits it all differently. So looking at all those things says, and for example, you go in the, in the corner next to the, to the left of that uh, blue green door, there's light kind of that's sneaking in a different way that's not blue, not green, there's a different color. So there's so many things going on here. It's all too much stuff going on. But this was my take on how to take something that was just ugly um, and, and try to figure out how do I get a shot out of it? I don't think it's going to be a, an award-winning thing, but it's something that, that I, uh, I, I was determined I was going to get something that, would, that, that was going to work. Um, the... Uh, uh, the, the next thing, and I'm just chugging along until I get overrun with, with, um, with questions or whatever. The uh, Try a different genre. Uh, Linda alluded to the fact that I tend to, just because, I just go out and try something different. And so trying a different genre, I, uh, I actually had too many things to put in this slide to make it realistic for us to go through about the different genres and, and how to work on this. But I came up with a, with a few things that might at least kind of illustrate my point. Um, again, a, a game to go out at five o'clock in the morning to Fort Worth. It's been raining and I want to go shoot sunrise in downtown Fort Worth. Uh, it's been raining and I figured I'm just going to have to sit, you know, underneath an awning or something to make a picture. The, lane, the rain lets up and there's this you know, the neon Starbucks sign. And I think, well, how do I make this interesting? It doesn't really look all that interesting or different on the inside. So I started walking around and saw this water pooling up on this table out, out, out front. So I just started looking and playing with, with the light that's coming off of all that. It's, it's different. You know, it won't look like that in uh, a day or an hour or whatever. Uh, and, and then looking at not only the textures on the table, but then looking at the, the colors if on, on the chair, the back of the chair to the right of me, you see at the very top of it, it's green because that's what the green uh, uh, Starbucks sign is. But across the street, there's a magenta neon sign that's, that's blasting across. So you see all these interesting colors and this sort of thing. So I thought this is interesting and it's, it's not what I normally do, but it presents a challenge of trying to figure out What's the focal point? What are the, what are the elements in this picture that I want to at least represent? Uh, and what are the things I want to make sure I leave out? What's my perspective? And so my camera is, I don't know, maybe six inches above the, the tabletop. Uh, and so it just there's that I don't make them the same way if I'm shooting um, a prairie. Uh, so there's, it's, just, it's just different. It's not an incredible challenge but it is a new set of problems unique to this scene. This is across the street. 
so this magenta sign, neon sign is, is above my shoulder. Uh, I'm actually sitting the camera down on the top of the curb, uh, trying to get this cool um, uh, manhole cover. And when I got down there, I saw, man, look at all the different, I didn't realize when I was standing up, how many reflections there were from all these different directions. And I, the, the other versions that I, I, that I grabbed this one by mistake, actually, I've got red traffic sign, traffic lights uh, that are a different color of red than the, than the movie sign down the street and so on and so forth. All the textures and the way the colors interacting with this, it didn't look like that. It was not a shot when I was standing up and walking along. But I, I get down on my on my, my belly or or sit on my rear end and, and use my legs as a tripod or whatever it is to get down really low and then try to focus. How am I going to get this? What lens am I going to use? Uh, am I going to use a longer lens so that I can compress it? Or what am I going to do? It's it's a it's a different challenge. This is not a landscaping kind of a kind of a picture typically. We 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 went into some of that with some macro stuff, but this is a, this is an interesting one also. So now for something completely different. This is the uh, these are the Mustangs over in uh, in Las Colinas that are somewhat um, somewhat popular or famous. And I showed up here a different day. I showed up here and um, it was kind of late, in the middle of the week, and I'm thinking, all right, that, that this will be great. I'll just sit there and shoot from all the way through sunset. Sun actually sets behind that building, and because it's like a U-shaped thing here, and and I was going to catch these lights coming up, but I'd never actually seen it in the dark uh, like this. But I knew what it, what it was going to look like, uh, and so I got there and discovered about the time I got out of my car, about twenty or thirty people showed up, different families that wanted to go someplace that didn't cost any money, and it was fun, and they got to run around and do whatever they want to. They couldn't break anything. I didn't have my tripod with me. And so long exposure, low light uh, shots that I want tack sharp. And yet, how do I do this? And so my own, this may not be politically correct, but I just always tell myself, okay, channel your inner sniper, you know, breathe just a certain way. Don't flinch. Don't do anything big. Just really be smooth about what you do and, and hold it all still. And so there's a number of the shots that I, that I took, um, that were not perfectly sharp. Uh, this one has to be close. Uh, there are some spots that aren't completely sharp, but this is very different, right? It's in this kind of lighting, you see the patina on these, uh, the, the, you see the, the green and the kind of purplish orange that's on these things as it ages. So I found this particularly interesting. And again, something that's, you have to balance the, the building in the back and you've got lights coming from all different directions. So I found, I found that one to be interesting. This is something that is a uh, category. I, we, we, we go out and we say, I want to shoot in, in great light. So early mornings and late in the evenings, a nice, good, uh, warm light, that sort of thing. But I have, this is a success story for me because I'd gone out and say, I don't know how many times I, I had gone out and said, I want to shoot something the way I normally would shoot this other scene. How would I go shoot it at one o'clock in the afternoon and there's not a cloud in the sky and it's 100 degrees outside. Now, what am I going to do? Do I just walk away? Do I just shoot it out the window of the car? I mean, what do I do? And so I had, I was, I had the, the fortune uh, of, uh, of having a photojournalist that was, in, in, there was an Italian photojournalist that was there and he began to talk to me about embracing the shadows, not just minimizing the shadows, but have the shadows be the bulk of the picture and just have little rim lighting show up on certain elements. And so he was walking me through, this is my, one of my first shots. And he actually showed me what I was trying to do because I just couldn't, this actually, you're not supposed to be able to see his face, but um, on, on, on this PowerPoint presentation, you can. Um, but the, I kept trying to figure out how everything in focus and everything lit. And he's going, no, you don't want everything to be in focus and everything to be lit. It's okay if only, you know, four or five chunks of hair on, the, on his face are sharp. He gave me a totally different way of thinking about this. I'm not a great street photographer. And this is certainly a different lighting situation. Um, this is a, another shot that we sat in, in one place with long lens and just watched people coming by. And we sat, we sat up, we set up so that it was black, black shadows, and there was super bright light. So we had to kind of get 
you had to kind of get set up ahead of time and you wanted to get people just like this where they're entering the light but not in the light you wanted them to you want to catch them in that transition which is is objective for us it, it, i had to edit this picture so that you could see that there's a guy sitting next to this woman and I don't speak Italian. I don't have any idea what was going on, but they talked for quite a while. And I don't know what their relationship is. I don't know what, I don't know what this is, but I found it really interesting. Um, and something actually, uh, I guess the last time I, uh, I did, I did thin line, this actually won uh, the street photography competition, which I thought was great. I don't know how to do street photography and, and <laughs> none of my stuff uh, won. So this next, this next picture, Linda doesn't know this. I have a picture of her when she's young. When she's young. This is Linda when she's young. <laughs> I was going to go, wait a minute, pause. No, no, no. no. Okay, this is fine. This is I, I'm sitting in, in, a medieval, in a medieval town in Italy in the middle of the day, and I see this, this young girl who is just, she's flying her freak flag or whatever you want to call it. And she's just loving it. And everybody's loving her while she walks around and, and there's a reflection in the mirror in the back. And she is just, she's just, uh, she's the, the center of attention on, in her mind and everybody else's. So I thought this was really cool. And again, that harsh lighting, um, once I got an idea of what to do with it, I never would have taken this shot. I never would have had any idea how to do this. So that's my street harsh lighting street photography never have i done this kind of a problem to solve so um this is one that i i i know i do this a lot uh where i go back many times to go shoot uh these old cabins and old buildings because i don't know how long they're going to be there because they're already falling apart and you don't know when they're going to be bulldozed um and so i find myself with folder after folder after folder of shots of going back you know, to folder every time I go out and shoot. And I, I find myself shooting those places over and over and over. But the first one, I'm, the first example I'm going to, to give you is one that I just chose. It has nothing to do, it's nothing particularly interesting about it, except I found it interesting. It's a tree. I call it my, uh, my challenge tree or my prosper tree uh, because it's close to prosper, Texas. And the, the, the ranchers that farm all the, all the stuff around it now wave at me. They, they laugh and they think it's cool and they like the fact that I'm driving down this road and I'm taking a picture of that tree again. They have no idea what I'm doing it, but they recognize me now and, and it's kind of interesting. So the idea of this here is you can pick however you want to do it, right? You can say, for example, I learned this lesson when I went to Utah uh, in February and uh, the, and the, the guide or the guy that was going to be with me said if you don't learn anything else you're going to learn how to shoot in all kinds of weather we're going out no matter what happens i said okay great so uh every day and sometimes a couple of times during the day different weather we went from 80 degrees to you know about 36 hours later we had 10 in the valley and it was you know it was super cold the next morning i'm shooting at at, I'm shooting just down the road a little bit, and it's it's minus five at uh, an hour. So, shooting at shooting in different times can be simply a matter of just sitting in in, in um, sitting early and just watching the sunset and watching how the lighting changes the scene, or how looking at the the weather, uh, how that or the foliage may be different. You define uh, same place. You define different times. There's not a there's not a right or wrong. This is your challenge. I'm assuming that everything we're talking about is me personally. I'm not, you don't have to agree with it. It doesn't matter to me. So here's a couple of the examples of my prosper tree. Um, we have, um, I have a number of, of uh, sh shots where the, the, the wheat field is in place. Uh, I, have, I have some with the cornfield on, on this. The cornfield is actually on the right-hand side the, of the road. The, the wheat's on the left-hand side. Uh, but you just never know for sure what's going to be planted there every year. So the cracks on the, on the ground, I thought was super interesting. Having, uh, having um, all of the texture of the wheat, I thought was really cool. Um, and then just driving up and there's no clouds in the sky. There's not going to be the bottom left corner. And yet I thought there's still a sunset. I mean, you can't say there's not a sunset because it happens you know, every day. So how are you going to shoot it? 
And so really my focal point in all of this was say, I want it when it's getting really, really low, because there's not a whole lot of sky interest. I want to pick up those, 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 that sun as it's going across and just kind of clipping across the, 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 the blacktop and getting those little um, uh, dandelion looking flowers or whatever it is there. That, that, was my, that was my goal after I'd been kind of wandering around a little bit. Uh, and and I, I remember the time, I don't remember the, the order in which all of this happened, but then you see the scene is really, really different, uh, even though it's from the same perspective as you then see a, a really cool, uh, just a very colorful sunset, but the sky wasn't unbelievably great. Um, th by the way, for, for a while, and I've got probably 15 or 20 more of these of different things, but my goal has been, I want people to not know it's the same tree. I don't want, if I tell them that, I want them to be surprised. So that's my little, again, that's my little scorecard. Um, the same thing with not very far from there is this old, which by the way, this, um, this doesn't exist anymore. This, they've replaced it with a nice aluminum um, a bridge or, or a, a pier or whatever you want to call it. And so this was all, the bottom right corner is harsh, is harsh light. And I had to figure out how I'm going to shoot it in harsh light but I was determined to shoot this, this dock, that's not, not up here, this dock. Uh, and so these are four different perspectives, all different times by, by, by nothing on the calendar. I don't even remember how they vary, but those are four different takes on this pier uh, this, um, and this, um, this dock. And they're, they're not at all the same. In fact, you wouldn't know that they're the same uh, by looking at them because you really can't tell those. So this is a challenge, right? To walk up and say, this challenge becomes more real for us when we walk up and say, you know, that farm, uh, that, uh, that barn in um, the Tetons, that everybody's taking a picture of that barn. They literally, if you've not been there, they literally, there's a worn out patch that they might as well just put up a, a big X there and say, stand here. That's where everyone stands to take the, and, and I'm not joking. That's what everybody stands. And so to, um, when you walk up and say, okay, I want to take that iconic shot that I talked about a minute ago. Once I take the shot and duplicate it, now I want to go shoot a different shot. I don't want to, I want everything to be just the same thing that a thousand other people, the first time I took pictures of the Golden Gate Bridge, I posted saying, this is the, I made up a number, right? But this is, um, this is the 8,724,765 uh, times that this picture has been taken. Um, it's really hard to be original. And so that becomes more and more of a challenge depending on how popular the place is. But it's a, it's, it's a, it's a scorecard for me. It's a win for me when people say, I've, I've been there. Where, where did you see that, that perspective before? So that's one of my measurement sticks. Now, uh, negative space uh, was something that I thought was when I first started hearing talk, uh, people talk about it. I just didn't see what the big deal was. Um, it's just a different spot in the, in the, uh, the, the, the framing of the picture, but it actually does pretty drastically change the way and the feeling and the nature of the, of the shot. So being aware, I didn't realize this until I was going through looking for this, how many different places I maybe sub, uh, subconsciously, maybe didn't think of it as being, I'm going to do a negative space, but there's a whole lot of my shots that once I kind of embraced it and kind of put that in my thinker about the Here's nine different ways to do this. Well, now I've got, I've got some other ones to say uh, negative space may be one of the things on my list. So here's a uh, wide open plane and a wide open plane um, and, and this tiny house. And it's, it, it, I deliberately am shooting really low because I wanted that kind of a up looking thing because otherwise the mountains disappeared, uh, even, comparatively speaking, because then the, the building would be taller than the mountains. From, from our perspective if we're standing. So this is a case where um, in shooting this shot and after I got to looking at it and I walked away feeling like this is in the middle of absolutely nowhere. I can't imagine somebody living here. I mean, there's nobody, there's no town anywhere close to this thing. And th thinking how alone it is and what, what did they do to live here? Because there's almost, this is one of those places where when, um, uh, when the mining or whatever it is ran, ran out, uh, the people who live there left or died. Uh, so th it does convey this big uh, and then that negative space. It, and this is uh, white, white sands. Again, looking at this and a lot of white sand <laughs> everywhere you look. 
So how do you find different ways uh, and this would be one. This is one of those cases where I use my my nine different points of perspective to say, I don't know, I don't have a vision for this, so I'm going to do those nine steps and then see what develops, which one I like. Uh, so using negative space, very very simple. If you can remind yourself to do it, and you may come up with somebody that um, uh, will look at your picture and go, Oh, that's not just a regular photographer. This is a pro. Because most people don't do this, even though it's how simple it is. All right, 360 degrees. This, again, can be interpreted multiple ways. Um, I'm thinking 360 degrees. And the way I'm going to show this is what was the scene when I took this shot? I wanted to go shoot a sunset. And I wanted to go down uh, and shoot it down a river. And so this is this is a, uh, not Granberry, what am I thinking of? Uh, Whatever it is, <laughs> just, do a just do a blank. Um, anyway, it, it, I'll think Blood Rose. Mm -hmm. So I get there, and there's there's no water. I mean, there's just little puddles. No, like, well, this is this stinks. But I knew I was watching the, the clouds. I thought this is going to be great. All the way down there, I'm thinking, all right, I'm going to have to hurry. Uh, and I had probably 15 to 20 minutes before the sun hit the horizon. And I, by the way, I've got a mountain in between me. So in the parking lot, I saw these clouds. The sun is setting behind me. But I thought, okay, I took a picture of the clouds in the parking lot, and then I ran to go get into the river and try to find something. So I'm just going to walk you through what, my process at 360 degrees. This is the first shot I was going to. I took. This is the shot I thought I was going to take. It doesn't line up exactly where I thought it was going to line up to shoot down the river, and uh, a bunch of the sunset is hidden. It, they're just too close to that cliff or to that, to that rise to be able to, uh, to really get the sun set the way I wanted to, unless it's going to turn out to be something incredible. So the next shot is um, I, I guess you skipped over a little bit. I, I scooted back a little bit, tried to shoot a little bit more to the right, but then I walked across the, the, this muddy dirt thing right here to get to, th to this left-hand side of the water here. And now I'm thinking, Okay, how am I going to frame this? I mean, it's kind of boring unless I get down pretty low. So I'm working my way through it, and I'm always keeping an eye on those clouds to figure out, now what am I going to do? Um, and so now I say, well, let me just make the reflections of the, the whole thing. Uh, and, and then I thought, well, let me scoot over a little bit more to the left because the clouds are kind of going to the right. So let me change my perspective and try to work my way around to keep those clouds from behind getting in the trees. Um, and then... Uh, long story made short, this is back now looking down uh, to to the left of this, right? It's down at, around the bend. So uh, this is, that's what this is. So there's a whole bunch more in between shots, right? Where I'm just incrementally doing this. But when you, when I do this, it reminds me in the middle of a sunset to stop and look over my shoulder. There's all kinds of cool stuff that's happening behind you or to the side of you or whatever, and you may not see it. And so be aware of 360 degrees. In this particular case, that's the way I applied this. There's a secondary, and, and by the way, this is, you know, the sun's almost gone by the time I got around the, the corner. So I didn't, I really only had one, I had to pick a spot quickly and, 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 and live with it. Uh, the other way you can do this 360 degree is that you can look for the light uh, on a subject and shoot coming from a given source. Let's say, let's say uh, a woman is looking into the into the light or into the sun or whatever, and you start shooting, let's say, behind her with backlighting, and then you move around, you know, maybe an eighth or a quarter of the way, and you continue to take picture uh, pictures of her face and her hair. And as that sh as you move around 360 degrees around her, exactly the opposite from this perspective. Um, it, you begin to pick up all kinds of different looks that people will be sometimes will be really, really surprised and happy with. Um, and the uh, so anyway, th there's a couple other ways I'm sure you can come up with it. But again, dealer's choice, make up however it works for you uh, and just just try it again. This is a game that I'm playing and you're welcome to play along. You say, let's, let's just make it up and let's come up with something. But once you pick it, stick with it until you go through the. The, the, the challenge of it, you've challenged yourself to do something, then sit down and, and look at the pictures and take 
score of how did we do, how did I do with that challenge? Okay, uh, this is not original at all uh, about shooting your backyard, but the, whether it's backyard or not, the point of this is to say, go someplace that you're really familiar with, that you take everything pretty much for, for, for granted because you walk by it all the time or it's right there next to you or whatever it is. Um, go find something that's super familiar and then discard your normal perspective of how you look at that very, very normal and common um, scene. Go find something that's interesting uh, that people would find interesting that don't, that don't live there and look out that backyard. My 95-year-old uh, mother-in-law uh, is a, she describes herself as being a very serious gardener, and <laughs> she is. Uh, that are crazy good. Um, by the way, the, the middle one is, I think that's uh, it's not garlic. It's maybe it's onions or something like that, but it's something that she took out. This, instead of throwing it away, she put it in the dirt and it started growing. So these are taken at, at different times, but basically in the same rough timeline. I didn't supply the water on the left. The water on the right, I did uh, spray it to see what was going on because uh, it, it just didn't look, didn't have enough texture for it for me. But uh, I know that those uh, those lilies are there, but I didn't look at them in this level of detail and all of the stuff that was with that. So this forced me to go find something that wasn't just, let me take a picture of the fence with the dog standing in front of it. Here's another shot in the backyard. Um, so there's known place like home. That's, that's, that's our known, uh, our, our known that the kids, the, the neighbors, apparently decided they wanted to call it off the kids did the in the in the middle of that the, the green uh, little plant uh that's a picture for my mom because she says um bloom where you're planted and she says that all my life i've heard her say that so just wherever you are dig in and make it work so i framed that picture when i saw it thinking through about why would that be a shot and now all of a sudden it took on something for me uh, the, the top uh, one up from that is a, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it's, a, it's like a wheel uh, that is a complete circle and all these different uh, tiles or whatever you want to call this texture and color underneath it that I thought was a lot more iridescent and a lot more colorful, I realized, until I actually sat down and started looking, how am I going to shoot this thing? It's kind of cool, but what am I going to do with it? And there's probably about 30 different ways I shot it, and this is one I liked. Uh, and then the, this other one was just uh, the ca different ca type of ca cactus uh, with, uh, with okra that my mother-in-law had, had. She's not going to eat it. She's waiting for the seeds to grow, and that's papaya and something else that's there. So that almost is kind of encapsulates uh, her and her gardening kind of an approach. So that's that's my take of that part. It's the backyard. Again, it's all of this is really not a mechanical process. It's not about settings on the camera. Yes, it's involved. But it's about recalibrating how we see our opportunity or do we have to have the inspiration first to go out and shoot or are we willing to just go and then say, I'll find something because of these kind of challenges. I'm going to find something. If I'm standing in 100 degree weather, it better be good. I'm not going to throw away pictures. I'm going to I'll go sit in the car again and get in the air conditioning and think about it some more and say, what can I, what's there? Let me go figure out how to shoot it. Um, so we don't always have the luxury of just knowing exactly what we're going to shoot before we get there. So that was what I had. This is, these are the, these are the rules. And I deliberately wanted to, to, uh, to go through this and give us time to talk if we want to, or ask questions or uh, give you some time back. But I, I deliberately wanted to let you hear this from my perspective, because it's a game for me. It's fun for me to do this. I don't like to work out. I love to play racquetball. I love to play games for exercise. I don't like to just sit there and work out. So practicing and shooting like you're going to, to a photography class, that's just painful for me. Um, so there are some things that they do to how, to how to use the camera, but they're painful because it's an assignment. But they're fun if you can figure out how to make it uh, interesting and how you can 
if I can get this done, I'm going to get, I'm going to go down to Brahms and I'm going to get some ice cream. And if I don't get any ice cream tonight, because I didn't figure out how to do this. So that's my, that's my take on it. And uh, there's always a, a little bit of that um, in behind almost anything of the stuff that I shoot. But anyway, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll stop here. And Linda, do you have any questions? I do. Um, so can you go back to Smith Rock, um, that picture? Um, there's not really a technical mm -hmm. question here, but um, tell me where Smith Rock is. I've seen so many pictures of it. I'm not sure where it is. It's um, in Central West Oregon. Central. So Oregon has, it's a lot more, kind of like Texas, Oregon has lush coasts. They have two mountain ranges with all kinds of incredible scenes. And then there's where it's, it's just as flat and, and as much as almost as uh, Death Valley. So it's, 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 it's far, it's kind of central and, and east, kind of out of ways. Okay. Smith Rock, you just have to know you're going to get there. Never yeah. expect to find it. Yeah, I would have never thought this was Oregon. Um, so Carolyn had a, no. a question in there. She, she wanted to know, if, she was curious, if you hiked the Misery Trail. I did not. All right. Um, so uh, my, my time was, my time frame was, we, um, uh, we were dodging the weather and we were going as fast as we could. And so the whole, every one of these scenes, we were hurrying. So we kind of had to be prepared. Okay. Um, go to that Oregon sea stack. Um, Valerie really likes that. She says it's gorgeous. And she wants to know how scary is it to get to that particular view? That's that next. It's, it, it's not. It, it's not scary. Um, the it's it's a relatively steep dirt. Uh, come, you're coming down the the. It, it's it's relatively steep, and this is a real popular place. It's not mm -hmm. hard at all to find. But this this one corridor is um, Boardman Corridor is what it's called, and it's just nothing but nonstop sea stacks. So you can go pick whichever one you want. But the only reason this was a problem is because I play baseball for 11 years and I have bad knees and I'm not 23. So as you're walking down this trail, you almost have stairs because all the roots from the trees. So you have, you're, you're not really at risk of falling. I mean, you carry a hiking pole or grab holds of trees and it's not bad. Coming out uh, is more, don't, don't think coming out is going to be as easy as going in because it's, it's kind of steep, but it's not, uh, it's no, there's no, um, there's no crime in sitting down and, and breathing a few, few minutes and getting ready to, to go a little bit farther. So, uh, th this looks, this is fairly much kind of on the edge, but I was very stable and nowhere close to being dangerous. Okay. She particularly loved the movement in the water and is curious about what your shutter speed was here. <sighs> I don't know. I'd have to look it up because this is one of those cases where I kept shooting this scene over and over and over and over as the light changed all the way until it was dark. And I was shooting long, long exposures or, or really fast ISO. So I can, I'm can i more than happy to, to share that with you, but I can tell you that I shot some version of this probably 10 or 15 times as the light changed. And there were times when the surf was heavier than others. Oops, sorry. Um, and, uh, and so it, it, every, depending on what was going on in this particular case, it was not particularly slow. Uh, it was a fairly churning surf. My guess is it's probably between a 30th and a hundredth of a second. I, I think a hundredth is too, is too, uh, too fast. Um, but when you're that far away and the, the surf is moving that much, um, by the way, this is, this is multiple shots, uh, if you swing all the way 180 degrees, there's a gap to the, at the edge of this, this, the right edge of this, there's a pretty good size gap. And then there's another, like a peninsula that goes out with some interesting looking trees on the tip of that. So I constantly shot the whole thing from one side to the other, about 180 degrees. I probably did that at least 10 or 15 times as the lighting and conditions changed. Okay. Well, with that, I'm going to ask you to take down your mm -hmm. screen. I'm scrolling through here. I'm not seeing any other questions, but I'm seeing a lot of comments, and I will share these with you. 
that um, you okay. know, he is saying fantastic shots, lots of great ideas. Um, you've inspired Bob C. And um, Ashley is saying this was a handful of terrific ideas, great presentation. And there's always several people that are in here saying that they've been inspired. And I think that is something that um, I've wanted um, some of the presentations to be. So I think you've, you've checked some boxes for us. Um, anything you wanna close with before we shut down your um, session? Mm -hmm. Anything you want to, is there any projects um, or trips that you've got um, planned that you want to share with us? I know that you're working on your website. Um, well, I've, I've, I've got at least where it's functional, but so I've discovered, um, I, I, I guess it's, it's uh, not unusual. It's a, it's a big discovery, but are y'all familiar with the Wichita Mountains in, in Oklahoma? Mm -hmm. Well, I know where they I had no idea. Yeah. Cool. It's it's way more cool than you think. Okay. I, I'm I, I'm going to go back and shoot it two or three or four more times. I I wanted to shoot the last time, uh, but they have uh, heat warnings. You have to be off the trails by ten to the day because they had someone die on the trails. But they have elk. Uh, they have bison uh, all year round. This is a sixty seventy thousand acre place, and the 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 uh, um. The scenery is like very rocky and uh, cool, really, you know, real, real mountains. Um, they've got canyons. Uh, they've got some river. I mean, it's not like you know, one of the, one of the canyons is called the 40 foot hole. And it looks just like you know, a lot of other canyons were very street, very steep edges. And um, uh, it's, it's a, it's a, has a lot of variety to it. So that's, a, that's a, a new point of inspiration for me. Uh, there's, I've got probably this whole iconic picture thing. I have at least 70 or 80 screen captures of pictures that other people have taken that I'm trying to figure out where did they take it and how do I get there? So um, I've, most of the time I'm, I'm staying close by, but uh, I would, I would, I'd like to go up into, up into Arizona. I'm sorry, up into um, uh, Arkansas and uh, maybe into Tulsa as it gets a little bit cooler. Yeah, I think a lot of things will change um, when it gets a little cooler. I think we'll, we'll all yeah. be a little bit more mobile and excited to get out. Well, Chris, you know, I, I want to thank you for coming and doing another presentation. You were here, I think last, was it last fall, maybe? And uh, you did one on- Probably, big, yeah, something like that. Last fall about histogram. So that's on the YouTube channel. But I wanted to thank you for coming back and doing something. It was, it was about uh, what is your camera trying to tell you? Yes, yes, <laughs> thank you. I was like, I should have written that down, but I just, it's <laughs> my aging brain. So thanks so much, Chris. You guys can connect with Chris Absolutely. on Instagram. Oh, you guys can connect with Chris on Instagram at cfitchphoto and through his website at cfitchphoto.com. And photo is foto.com. And I'll put all of those links in the show notes. We're off next Wednesday, but I will be back on August 17th with Cracking the Code of Photo Competitions with Paul Malinowski. So until next time, go out and create something beautiful. Right. And I hope that we see you again soon. Thank you all.